So we're going to it's the CES meeting on January 31st. Today we're talking again about a uh, a hardened integrity level and um, Mark's going to lead with a summary and then we have a conversation. We're expecting a conversation with Matthew, Patrick, Peter, and Tom. And uh, take it away, Mark. Okay, uh, so Agoric has this hardened operation, which is a uh, implemented using uh, you know, implemented at user level in JavaScript using object.freeze at each step of the harden. And the idea of harden is that uh, it does a, a transitive reflective walk of properties and prototypes. Um, and the reason for the reflective qualifier in there is that if it encounters an accessor property, it does not do a get on it to freeze the value, rather, it freezes the accessors themselves. Um, and the transitive nature is uh, uh, transactional in the sense that uh, the object isn't considered hardened until the entire transitive graph reachable from the object is hardened. So being hardened gives you a invariant uh, that the transitive graph rooting, rooted in you is hardened. So if there's any failure along the way, uh, then uh, everything that was in the process of being hardened, everything that was uh, hardening um, uh, does not transition to hardened because the uh, completion of the transitive graph has failed. Um, so that was all um, uh, uh, very nice and uh, Modable has implemented that uh, in the in the XS engine and uh, by itself it would be ready to be proposed to TC39 uh, and it works and it works through proxies because it relies only on the object invariants um, uh, which proxies preserve. Uh, the problem is the conflict between um, one, our desire to hang other semantics on being hardened, uh, which is that an object, and this is what makes it a new integrity level, rather than just a transitive application of the frozen integrity level, uh, is we would like to uh, uh, have an object once hardened be immune from the override mistake, meaning that that properties that are on the or that are that are non-writable on the hardened object do not suppress being able to override those properties on objects that inherit those properties by assignment. Uh, that was a confused sentence, but you got it. Uh, and the other one is the other override, uh, which is, that hardened objects. Uh, sorry, Mark froze for me. How ironic. Uh, Is, it did so not funny? freeze for me. All, all good on my end. Okay, it was probably on my end. Okay. Um, uh, the, um, uh, oh, so yeah, so the other thing we'd like to hang on harden as a new integrity level uh, is the other override, which is uh, uh, saying that uh, that return override cannot be used to stamp hardened objects with private properties. So this is expanding the precedent that uh, is already being pushed for with regard to the global object. Uh, because of the uh, behavior of browsers uh, not allowing private properties to be stamped on uh, the window object. Um, we want to generalize that to not allow hardened, to letting hardening protect objects in general from being stamped. And the, the purpose for that is, uh, I'll leave aside from the summary, but it's been stated elsewhere. Um, uh, so the conflict is between that uh, in order to hang other semantics on it, we need it to be a new integrity level uh, rather than just emergent 
uh, from an ex from a pattern of the existing integrity level. Uh, and that means we need to involve proxies in the transition. And we need to involve proxies in the transition in a way that proxies can uh, pre can safely preserve transparency. And that conflicts with both the transit transactional nature by making it um, transitive uh, uh, because you have to participate in the uh, hardening um, uh, as well as even if you, you define the one step, uh, each step of the process as the, as the integrity level, non-transitive integrity level, which we've been calling stable, uh, we still have not been able to figure out how to make that properly transparent through proxies. And I believe that's a complete summary of the dilemma that we're in. Okay. Yeah. Uh Thanks for explaining. I do, I do have some questions about uh, kind of the goals. I really like increasing integrity and increasing immutability, uh, but I want to understand kind of the, the scope of this, but I don't want to interrupt your conversation now. So maybe we could cue those to the end after you have your already planned discussion. Yeah, um, we would love to have a larger follow-up uh, and, and feedback on 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 the goals, but yeah, this conversation I would really like to uh, use Tom's, uh, Peter, and Patrick's time uh, to discuss the uh, details of integration with uh, with proxies. Um, okay, sounds good. So absent one, one quick clarification absent. here on uh, on what Mark described though is that we we ended up. Uh, I mean, Mark mentioned it, but fairly quickly is that we ended up deciding uh, to introduce two integrity levels, really. Uh, one uh, that we, as a placeholder name, called uh, stable or stabilize, uh, which is basically a uh, frozen object, but not frozen state, but not emergent. Uh, it is an explicit uh, integrity level. Uh, and as such, uh, would have its own proxy traps um, and then uh, the Harden, uh, currently we, what, until now we were discussing it, um, we couldn't figure out how, on how to make it not an emergent uh, integrity level. Uh, however, I might have an idea here and that's what I want to discuss today. Um, and the, the biggest problem with, a, uh, with an explicit integrity level is that it applies to a set of objects and as such needs to uh, to be atomic, atomically applied to potentially multiple proxies at the same time. So it is not the same uh, as any other proxy trap. You cannot ask the proxy to mutate uh, the states of, uh, of the target. You have to do that yourself or verify that it has been done in some atom, other atomic way. Uh, can, I, can I ask a clarifying question? Uh, the part of the concept was that hardened objects won't uh, have the override mistake, but are, are you talking about the one where you're setting some what on a set or which override mistake are you talking about? Right, so for we're, we're actually decided that it would be uh, better to uh, use the new stable uh, or stabilized um, integrity level, which is per object to, uh, to opt out of uh, the override mistake or uh, to opt out of the return override and uh, private field sampling uh, thing. Okay, the, the return override one, I understand, but the override mistake, isn't that about when you're trying to set a property that has like a non-writable property in a right. in its prototype chain? So you're talking about if you have a non-stable object whose prototype is a stable object and it has this non-writable property, uh, is that the case you're talking about? Correct. If if the non uh, if the non writable property is on a uh, stable object, the uh, the step that currently throws would uh, simply uh, fall back to the behavior of uh, setting the property on the target. Okay, so this is for targets that are not stable in particular, because if it's stable, Correct. then. None of this makes any sense. You're not, you're the yeah, sets yeah. already rejected. 
Yeah, okay. the, the, the stable state is regarding the prototype which holds the non-writable, uh, the prototype object which holds the non-writable property. So concretely, okay. if if you had uh, a stable object dot prototype, it would be possible to create a bare object and assign its two string or constructor properties. Uh, what? Um, if, sorry, I. If object dot prototype is uh, made stable, that means you can build any object and then assign it. Oh, yes. To assignment to set uh to string. Okay. The restriction of making the override mistake to this seems a little uh I mean I don't understand the, the reason exactly for restricting it, but it does all fit together nicely. I just want to note one interaction which we've discussed before, which is records and tuples. Uh you know the champion group is trying to move towards more towards an object based form. So uh, we should have that conversation about how these two things interact before you know the next meeting before before March April. Yeah, yeah, we um, there is a lot of other concerns with uh, records and tuples. Like I, I believe, I mean, I don't want to get into it right now, but one main difference is that a record and tuple uh, has uh, equality uh, constraints as well, which uh, this does not. And quality constraint uh, basically entrains uh, a requirement that the object pretty much be born frozen uh, or deeply frozen. Uh, or yeah, I let let's discuss it later. But one alternative that I don't know if it really works is uh, is you could make a separate map type that only is for hardened things, things that have already become hardened. And uh, so you can't put objects that may later become hardened in it as keys. I kind of wonder if that could be a solution, but it's a little bit it's a little I, bit messier in some other yeah, ways. I had talked about that with Ashley at some point, but I, I, from what I remember, there were problems, but that's definitely out of scope for uh, for this case. Okay. Okay, thanks. I'm done. Um, Peter, do you have any update on Patrick? Um, sorry, I uh, I just uh, I checked in with him, but I haven't heard back. So I assume there's something that's preventing him from joining right. us. Um, well, so let's can... let's proceed as best we can. Yep. Um. All right. So well, this is uh this is a little bit based on um after our last meeting, I think three weeks ago now. Uh, Patrick shared uh some pseudo operations. Uh, for his understanding of our uh, discussion or one possible uh, approach after our discussion. Um, and as for feedback, um, I found that it would be easier to explain with a similarly uh, formulated pseudo spec steps uh, what I had in mind and how that differs. Um, in Patrick's suggestion, there were uh, two main differences with what I'm about to uh, present. Um, one is that the integrity level, both for hardened and, uh, and stable, was uh, applied as a slot to the proxy object, where uh, one thing we had discussed is uh, potentially um, not storing the state that states on the proxy object, but instead deriving it from its target, uh, which brings in complications, as, uh, as, you're, as you will see. The other, uh, the other thing is, I believe uh, there were still the problem of not involved. Yeah, there were no traps designed for hardening uh, the object, uh, and so allowing proxy to uh, maintain transparency in the face of uh, hardening, um, and which is difficult because you know. Uh, Hardening is on a set of uh, objects and not on a unique uh, object. Let me share my screen. Um, I wrote a gist about this. Uh, it's a draft. I barely wrote it and then went to bed. It's probably full of bugs. But um, so disclaimer, <laughs> don't expect running code. Um, all right, so 
I'll start. Those are just uh, things that would be needed, uh, like the regular spec text that I implemented really quick. Um, so as I mentioned, like I am using a weak sets uh, as a slot marker for ordinary objects. Uh, the main thing for, so let's start with is stable or is stable. The main thing about this is that really uh, the stabilized operation for an ordinary object is uh, really freezing, setting the integrated level to frozen, and then remembering uh, that the object was uh, stabilized. Uh, that is about it. And checking if it's stable, it's a, for an ordinary object, it means just checking if it's in the stable, if it had a stable slot. Um, then becomes the question of proxies. Uh, proxy, let me see where I can start this. Uh, I will start this from the stable. And let me actually do this in my code editor or else, uh, so I can navigate a little bit easier. Um, Cause yeah, this doesn't have, one sec. All right. Yes, cool. How's this for everyone? Okay, so, um, you know, hard and too hard, sorry about that. Let's get back to it. So stabilize. So is stable. Same thing. We uh, ah right. Let Let's look at how what it takes to check if an object is stable or not because it will. I'm here. I'm going to introduce who's the complication of looking at the uh, the target chain. Um, if it's not if it's not a, an exotic object, you can just rely on the ordinary operate uh, the ordinary uh, operation. That's fine. Um, ignore this for now, but uh, basically, you want to go, this is just an optimization. So you want to go and check whether the real target, because at the end of the day, a proxy, its target can be a proxy itself and so on. But at the end of the day, it needs, it has, to, by, by spec construction, it has to bottom out in an ordinary object, or at least in a non-proxy object. We want to be pedantic. Uh, there is a lot of exotic objects that are uh, uh, in the spec, but we control all those uh, all those behaviors, and we can make them ordinary behaving uh, for all of them. So you have to go and recurse through the target chain to verify if that uh, is actually stable. Uh, if it is, uh, we bypass proxy traps. So this is a difference from the uh, current implementation of is um, uh, is extensible. Is extensible always uh, always triggers proxy traps, even if the target is already uh, shown as uh, non-extensible. We wanted to avoid this. Uh, we wanted to avoid necessarily uh, triggering uh, proxy traps uh, for this. Um, and so we really only trigger uh, the proxy trap if uh, the target is not already stable. And that is a, a chance for membranes to uh, transparently uh, update the states of their uh, of the proxy targets and uh, and yeah uh, and maintain membrane transpar transparency. Um, this is very straightforward implementation. Uh, get the trap, call it, uh, compare the results with uh, what the uh, state, it, what the target uh, stable uh, shape is. The main difference here, as you see, is that we're uh, in one case we're saying don't go check again the uh, the proxy chain uh, because we just did that. 
and here we're saying like, well, you we had to go check the proxy chain again uh, because you know uh, it's supposed to have been stabilized. Um, and that's pretty much it. Pretty straightforward uh, trap implementation uh, for a stable. Let's move on to making a uh, stabilizing an object. Uh, I say it's it's pretty much the same. Uh, call the abstract operation for stabilize. Same thing. If the object is already stable, we don't try to stabilize it. So this is a difference with uh, prevent extensions. Uh, prevent extensions is always called even if uh, the target is already uh, non-extensible, uh, and as such, the proxy would be non-extensible. So uh, same logic here, and stabilizing the object, I already showed that for an ordinary object earlier. For stabilizing the proxy, uh, it is roughly normal stuff. Uh, so for prevent extension, the behavior for prevent extension as a, as a comparison is that if you um, if you call prevent extensions and it returns false, then it doesn't bother uh, checking the state of the target. Uh, so even if the target at that point is actually uh, non-extensible, uh, it will just return false. I found that a little bit strange, and especially with our case where we don't, uh, where we want to cache the behavior, like use the, 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 the state of the targets uh, as, as authoritative, uh, we basically have to check for this. So let me, sure. let, me, let me make sure I understand this because I find it surprising. And I'm glad Tom's here to be able to clarify at least whether it's in, intentional and needed. Um, so you're saying that a proxy with a non-extensible target can claim to be extensible. No, I'm saying the opposite. I'm saying that a, a proxy, yeah, 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 correct. A proxy with a non-extensible target can claim to be, uh, can claim to have failed the prevent extensions operation. Oh, can uh, can claim to have failed the oper the operation, uh, but not but if you do an is extensible. Correct. Cannot, I see. Okay, that's 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 weird. Okay. It's all strange. Uh, Understandable because basically the idea is to not if it says don't don't uh, my I'm, I'm my educated guess here is that if you say I didn't want to uh, to put my target as non extensible uh, don't go check <laughs> if I did that or not like don't touch my target. Uh, because the target itself might be a proxy, which we trap. So this is why in this case, if yeah. it says I didn't uh, stabilize the target, we check with no side effects if the ultimate proxy target is uh, in fact uh, stable or not. There is there is a little potentially uh, a so I thought at first there would be a way to use this to um, to probe the state of a target without triggering traps. But this only will be the case, this will be the case in, in two scenarios. One is the, your real, your proxy target is an ordinary object, which is not, uh, which is, if it's an ordinary object, it will become frozen. It, I guess if it is a, Right, right, right. Sorry, 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 sorry. So if you have a, my bad. If you have a proxy trap that says returns false without touching the, the target, if the target is an ordinary object, the check will return false. And because the, the, the ordinary object, well, it will return the state of the ordinary object no matter what. So it's, it's the same as checking uh, the, 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 the target as an ordinary object. If it is uh, a proxy object, uh, it will return false. So it will just say we false in this case is the equivalent of we don't know what the uh, what the stable state is, and you can't know the stable state of a proxy until you ask it. So no matter what, it doesn't reveal any information because 
you have to ask the proxy to know what it is. That makes sense. Um, so I, I don't, I mean, something we should definitely explore a little bit more, but I don't think there is any, uh, any way to reveal uh, information about the, what kind of objects a target is. But we should definitely explore that at some point. Um, right. So, and at the end of the day, I think that's it for uh, the stable side of things. Um, stable side is fairly straightforward. It's roughly uh, what Patrick uh, had sent, uh, but with the twist of checking the the, the proxy chain for uh, the chain of targets on the, on the proxy for the, the state of uh, st the stable. All right, is there any question regarding uh, the is stable and stabilize? Uh... Okay, in this, I just wanna verify, um, in this design, there's still no extra state on the proxy itself. All of this state is, okay, great. The, the, the only state here is kept on ordinary objects. Okay. So then, sorry, I, I'm, I'm slowly catching up. The, um, the is stable can not be cached then because there's no state kept on the proxy? Like, I, I mean, you wouldn't want to have to check that every time, or is that the it, idea you do have to check it every time? It, it can be cached. So as an optimization, you can cache it. Uh, you can cache that it is stable. You cannot cache that it is not stable because a proxy that is not stable can also always become stable. But it would become stable through an operation. So then you would, I mean, you could cache on that operation, no? Correct. As a, like, as- Well, it, it might right, become stable. It might, it might become stable because not through an operation on the proxy. Mm -hmm. It might become stable it might become stable because through some other path, the target had been stabilized. Uh, and therefore, if you, um, uh, if you if you try to cache that it's not stable, you have a cache invalidation problem that you want that you would want to avoid. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, I got it. Thank you. Right. But uh, yes, an implementation can cache on the proxy uh, object that uh, the proxy is stable if it doesn't want to look up the uh, the target chain every time. This is non-observable. Um, all right, so pardon. Um, So this is quite a bit more complicated. The high level idea is uh, to introduce a way to hook, for proxies to hook into uh, the steps that happen during hardening. Um, and really uh, it allows an opportunity. So, so we're gonna, like, we're still gonna, Keep the same high-level uh, traversal. So you traverse uh, all the properties and prototypes. Um, you add them to a set of uh, objects that need to be uh, hardened. Uh, so when you encounter an object, you stabilize it, and then you look at it so that it is stable when you look at it. Um, and then you you, you build your, your list. Uh, all that is done internally uh, minus triggering proxy traps that uh, during the, the walking because there is no way around that. Um, the main thing is that then we introduced a hardening step, which is where proxies get discovered. Uh, they're in actually going, uh, their object is actually going uh, through an hardening uh, operation. Um, the idea is that we're going to trigger the hardening uh, trap on all those proxy objects, giving them a context shared for the harden operation so that uh, a membrane can uh, build a list of uh, proxy uh, objects that are going under uh, hardening operation. And that 
context allows you to add a hook uh, to be called uh, before the commits. So that's at the point where you reach before commits, uh, that means all the objects part of the hardening set, their hardening trap has been triggered. So now the membrane has a cohesive set of objects that are going under hardening and can perform hardening on the other side of the membrane as necessary. Uh, so so uh, I'm, I don't understand what the problem is that this is solving. Let, let me let me explain the my possibly naive um, perspective where there isn't you know with, without a problem that I'm without the problem that I'm not understanding, uh, which is that given that we've got stabilized working well through uh, proxies, which this looks like it looks like you you uh, everything you outlined sounds like it it's good. It sounds like it works, does that. Uh, then hardening can just be an emergent integrity level. Uh, and that as the um, as and as well as hardening being a, a, a bookkeeping during a hardened transit of hardened operation. Uh, and that uh, because hardening each step of it is doing a stabilize, the uh, if it fails, you still have some objects stabilized and some objects not. Um, uh, but if it's just and and then the commitment at the at the end of the traversal uh, has to be an atomic commitment without traps, uh, and that this is all uh, consistent with hardened being hardened just being emergent, not being an explicit integrity. Um, there were I had found issues. I need to refresh my mind on what they were exactly, but I had found issues with Arden being an emergent. Uh, integrity level. Um, I mean, one of one main concern, I think, is uh, proxy revocation, uh, wow. where that it would effectively mean, unless we decide that a uh, revoked proxy is hardened, uh, it could cause a object graph to uh, regress in hardened states. Uh, that is one concern. Um, right. We, 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 I remember one of the perspectives on that was to say that a revoked proxy uh, is stable um, uh, since you're always, you know, can always go from non stable to stable. And the uh, a revoked proxy. Uh, you know, the theory of a revoke proxy is that it's acting like a proxy in which every handler trap throws uh, and in which, um, uh, therefore, the target is not otherwise observable. So um, in this case, we could say that uh, it's acting like the target has made a transition to state, that the revoke, revoke operation, it's Oh, there is a little bit of a contradiction there. But um, yeah, there you know, was something else. Uh, I'm trying to get back to it. There, there was after our discussion, I realized that uh, it was a problem to have uh, Harden as a emergent integrity level. Um, I would need to. Uh, I would need to get back to the discussion. I think I, if if we want Harden. So it, there is nice properties of having Harden as a uh, an explicit integrity level. One of them is that the the proxy uh, yeah um, right. Oh, I I I cannot remember now. Yeah, the I mean as, as an immersion, you still need to trigger every trap in the in 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 the proxy when you check if something is hardened. Uh, in general, like checking if something is hardened is still a very expensive operation if it's an emergent uh, level. And it's something we do extremely often. Uh, and I don't know if if it would be compatible for an, in, if it would be observable for an implementation to uh, cache 
the hardening states uh, once it's been discovered. Um, I don't know. I, maybe we should continue. Uh, maybe okay. we can, I, I went over uh, the approach I'm taking here. If we want to make hard an explicit level uh, and then table the question of whether we can get away with not having it an explicit level to, uh, to another time. OK, that, that sounds like, good to me. I'd like okay. feedback on, on this approach. So if we want harden as an explicit uh, integrity level, I um, you need to involve proxies uh, to reflect their, uh, so that they, they can maintain membrane transparency. Um, so one of those things is the his hardened uh, trap, which is actually fairly straightforward. So the other uh, tricky bit is only hardening a set of objects, part of a membrane, atomically. Uh, you cannot go and say like, oh, this object just got hardened, so uh, or is in the process of getting hardening, so I'm going to go harden just that object on the other side, because that object uh, on the other side of the membrane uh, will have other objects that need to be hardened as part of, a, uh, as part of it. Uh, and potentially some of those objects are uh, for proxies that are back in uh, uh, the incoming side of the membrane. I don't know. The, yeah, I started crossing membrane sides without giving names, so difficult. <laughs> um, I don't know if everybody got that. I did not get that. So uh, blue and red, um, you are hardening on the blue side. Uh, some of the blue objects are proxies for uh, things that are on the red side. However, uh, some of the things on the red side uh, are the targets, the real targets, uh, actually transitively uh, have uh, are proxies for things that are on the blue side. So if you are hardening an object on the blue side, on the red side, you go and you need to harden that. Hardening that ends up causing, requiring and hardening of objects on the blue side, which you are in the process of doing uh, already. Uh, so you end up with nesting and uh, and coming back on, on wanting to harden the same objects over and over, and you end up in the uh, infinite recursive uh, loop. Did that make sense? Um, no, uh, I mean, I, I, I mean, I heard what you said, but the, the hardening, we already have the notion of bookkeeping and hardening that once an object is in the hardening state that the transitive walk always the, checks if the, it's the already trap, hardening. And, and so the state. proxy traps need to be triggered before, uh, the hardened uh, state is committed. So at the time the proxy traps are triggered. The, hard, the objects on the blue side are not hardened yet. But at the end, at the time yeah, sure. the, the hardened traps finish triggering, the, uh, the, the proxy targets, the, uh, the shadow target, needs to be hardened. So the, the if hardened, if, if the, the Harden is is transitive, so you can only something can only transition to harden right. once the entire transitive walk is completed. So that's what I. So the 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 bookkeeping needed to do something transitive like that is um, a harden a, a a somewhere the bookkeeping for being that that you're that you're in the that you're hardening. Uh, so that you can terminate the graph walk when you um, mm -hmm. encounter an object that you're already hardening. Right, but this is an internal bookkeeping to the hardened operation. Now you're exiting to proxy traps, which need to perform hardening on the other side of the membrane as well. Part of that hardening is a separate hardened operation, independent. Ah. Yeah, uh, 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 uh. which may trigger and okay. trap again on the other side. Okay, yeah, that doesn't, you can't, yeah, you can't break up a, nope. 
a, 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 you can't break it up into hardened steps um, because well, then, 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 then you lose the hardening bookkeeping and you get into infinite loops, like you said. Yeah, so this allows, this allows creating a unique context for the hardened operation, allows the membrane to do uh, bookkeeping on its own uh, of which objects are under hardening for a certain, uh, for a single operation, perform the same hardening on the other side of the membrane on that set of objects. With some more bookkeeping, it can figure out that that hardening operation is related to the hardening operation on uh, the blue side of the membrane, and then realize that um, the hardening objects that would cross back again don't need to be hardened because they are uh, under uh, under hardening already. OK. I, it would have to be verified, but I think it is sufficient. It is basically a way to for the membrane to build a set of objects under hardening uh, and and perform the harden operation on the other side of the membrane. So what is this, what is the context object? I mean, what does it look like? Uh, the context object. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, and and let me just be, make sure I'm understanding. The context object is actually a visible object. It's actually it's a visible object, object that is provided to the proxy trap. Correct. Okay. It is it is deeply frozen manually. Uh, it has a unique identity for everything. We could have it as a prototype that's shared. That's it would have, it would be somewhat hidden. So, but we can get at it through um, through function calls. So I believe that's acceptable as well. Anyway, um, the hardened context is uh, basically an object uh, that that has two methods to add uh, callback hooks. Um, let's go. I, I think the easiest is probably to go through the hardened steps and then see how that uh, that plays. Uh, I'll skip over some things that are still a little bit in flux anyway and uh, not really relevant. So regular hardened uh, logic. I'm sorry. I, 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 want, I want to interrupt you for a procedural thing. It's yeah. clearly the case that we're not going to uh, come to a conclusion uh, within the next 10 minutes. So we need definitely need to schedule another one of these. Should we try to do the scheduling on the call or given Patrick's absence, we should probably just do that offline, but I just wanted to raise it. I'll, I'll follow up by email. Okay. Okay, Matthew, go. Yeah. Um, all right. So just high level harden regular uh, logic for harden. I mean, uh, you queue the roots, uh, and then you basically go through the list of objects to harden uh, until it uh, you reach the end. Uh, by and every time you traverse, you keep adding uh, to the list. So stabilize, as I mentioned, and then traverse each object which will add every property and prototype to the list and keep doing until you get to the end. So now that you've done the traversal, uh, you've made your list of all the uh, objects to harden, and you enter the hardening phase. The hardening phase is, uh, is basically about saying, like, looking whether, uh, asking the object whether it can be hardened or not. Um, and what's important is that it doesn't have to answer right away. Uh, so if it's a proxy, if, if it's um, if it's an ordinary object, the uh, the object will will get will get hardened. There is nothing uh, uh, an ordinary object can say to uh, for that not to happen. Uh, if it is a proxy, a proxy can uh, just use that to say, oh, I'm being asked to be hardened. Okay, uh, I will not check my 
I will not update the state of my shadow targets. I will postpone that until I have talked to the other side of the membrane, but I want to talk to it uh, atomically. So this is just about letting the proxy know here are all the objects that are there. The proxy can use the context object to have a before hook uh, a callback so that um, it will be called at the end um, once we we've, once we we've notified all the objects, proxy objects that are going under hardening, uh, we go and, uh, well, first, ignore this. Uh, not necessary right now. This is about dealing with proxy targets. Um, so we go and uh, go through the list of uh, hooks that have been registered and call them uh, with a context object again so that, you know, uh, the, the proxy membrane can do uh, some bookkeeping uh, using that con unique con shared context object. Um, this is the time the hook registered by the membrane can go into the other side and uh, harden things on the other side and reflect the result of the hardening on, uh, on the ordinary targets. The, ordi the, the requirements is that by the end of the hook phase, all objects that are going under hardening are set to, uh, to acknowledge hardening. That means the proxy targets that are ordinary need to have accepted that they are going under hardening. If not all objects have accepted going under hardening, the operation fails. And this is what it is here. We're going through all the objects seeing if there is an object that didn't acknowledge hardening, the, uh, the hardening operation fails before any commit operation. Uh, and then there is also a hook after to say like, hey, you know that object I told you I was going to harden? Well, he actually did get hardened. Because hardening, acknowledging hardening does not uh, guarantee that the uh, that the object will have gotten hardened. And, uh, and similarly to stabilizing, uh, the hardening operation is, is not a flag set on the proxy, but it's a flag set on the targets because the target is always uh, representative of uh, the uh, proxy's state. So very high level, but it's a fairly straightforward, like, had hook and uh, steps uh, hardening. It, it's basically reifying the internal steps of the hardening process, adding hooks so that proxy objects can uh, can discover subsets of their uh, objects, proxy objects uh, that are going under hardening and replicate that uh, as necessary. Okay. Um, so next next meeting, I very much want to explore the alternative. Um, strategy of hardening as only an emergent integrity level. Uh, I think I think from from seeing the what's needed to make it an explicit ex integrity level, I think we can all agree that if we could make the other thing work out without undue complexity, uh, that it's it 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 is worth it to avoid a lot of this complexity. Yeah. I'm so, not thinking... yeah, yeah, yeah so just um, I want to chime in here and second that. Um, so I, I'll definitely need some more time to digest this code, Matthew. But uh, but um, it, it's exactly as you said, right? What we're doing here is we are exposing the full complexity of this incremental algorithm uh, in the proxy API, and so. This is different from um, any of the other traps, I would say. Um, so there's sort of a design discontinuity here, um, which, I mean, if it's needed, it's needed, right? But so I, I agree with Mark that if there's a way that we can hide more of this, um, then it will also be a e much easier sell, I believe. Um, so, yeah, just uh, maybe the, the other problem is I'm we're learning both the API and the implementation at the same time, and I'm I'm having a hard time 
understanding what are sort of the responsibilities here for the proxy author uh, and the invariants they have to satisfy. So that's, but that's just because it's the first time I'm exposed to this. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, maybe I, sorry, it, it's a, it's a lot to digest here. Um, the, both Patrick and I are not totally comfortable with the idea of an emergent integrity level um, because it seems like there's potentially like a lot of runtime work during during operations to to like detect if that if that um, if that if that integrity level has emerged um, and so it's going to make it seems like it can make execution time of some things like very unpredictable again um maybe we're missing something or maybe i'm i'm not understanding but um but that that whole concept of an emergent integrity level seems really um complicated from a, a runtime perspective because now we we have to look for that at, at at different times um to give these these behaviors that we're talking about for for the override mistake and uh, the return well, override trick yeah, I, think, I think i think the idea with with regard to the semantic changes is that we would hang hang this uh, Matthew? Please, please. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, I was going to say yeah. Correct me, correct me if I'm wrong here, but the idea would be that the semantic changes uh, we hang off of stabilize being stable. We don't hang off of being hardened. Okay, sorry. Okay, I, that's the part that I missed. Right. Okay. Um, it, I, I guess it's um, it's mostly a question of um, is it important for uh is it important to when we want to check if an object is hardened uh whether there is no limited complexity uh in that um it's still going to trigger traps no matter what uh like if 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 the object you're asking is a proxy it will trigger a trap um but and it's not hardened it will trigger a trap sorry uh, the question is like it, the spec itself, like whatever we specify, we haven't really encountered a behavior we want to attach to Harden, but user land uh, usages of Harden may want to uh, to verify if an object is Harden and, uh, and and does that operation fairly often. Whether that should be an operation that is checking emergent. Integrity level. So, so I, I will point out that right now, at Agoric, um, uh, you can do a harden. There, there is no is hardened operation. Um, and if if it turns out to be hard to have an is hardened operation, uh, the fact that we've been living without it might mean that we mo don't need it. It's at least some evidence. Uh, rather, what happens is the transactional nature is that. You can try hardening, and if harden succeeds, then you you know the invariant holds. Um, but uh, if it fails, it's still failing, having stabilized some things. Um, let me let me point out just and in, in, I know it's we're about to go over time. Um, uh, as you were talking about the problem with harden as an as an emergent integrity level. Um, uh, it occurred to me that something else we can hang off of stabilize that might make all of this work better is in just the way that if the target is already stable, it does not trigger a, ta a trap to ask if it's stable or trigger a trap to say to 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 stabilize it. You could also have being stable suppress the traps for all of the other implied stability. So it's too late to say that if you ask an object if it's extensible, that if the that if the target is already non-extensible, that there's no trap. It's too late to do that. But you could say if you ask an object if it's extensible and it's stable, then it's necessarily non-extensible. So you can say that it's not extensible with no trap. Um, so non extensible. Yeah. So and and similarly, if you um, uh, 
uh, ask about uh, prop um, properties being configurable or writable. Um, you could do you could do all all sorts of implied stability with no further trap, and therefore you could even do of that step of the transit of walk. So I, I thought about that, but it's not entirely true because no matter what, you need to check to maintain proxy transparency, uh, membrane transparency, you need to uh, add a check whether the object is stable or not, which can trap itself if it's not. If it's not, but it once it but if it is stable, then it doesn't trap. Correct, but you you have you still have to ask like it's it's not a I'm only gonna ask if it is, uh, if it is already stable. You ask you have to check the the like if if the object is not stable, you will trap. Right. And I think that that blows. You're saying, the... you're saying you're saying if the object is not stable, you're trapped. You'll trap. You'll there'll be an extra trap. That would be bad. Okay. And and I think this is similar. I mean, that's that's the core of the the emergent uh, emergent hardened states. that if some part of the graph has said it is not stable, you will keep trapping every proxy across the, that graph. So you need to construct the graph every time, and you need to uh, potentially triggering those traps. I need I, I, again. I need to go through uh, the discussion we had on the issue uh, about why I, I was starting to become really uncomfortable with an emergent uh, integrity level. Okay. Yeah. So so definitely next next meeting. I very much like to 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 dive into that because I think it's I think resolving whether it needs to be explicit is is sort of the a fundamental fork in the road here. Um, all right, I think that is it. Uh, we already lost uh, our host, Chris, so uh, I guess to be continued. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, Matthew. Thank, Thank you. you. And the uh, the recording of this will be up um, so Patrick can see it. Is that... Yes. I believe so, yeah. Okay.